Welcome to Old Guy Tech, the OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Hi, I'm Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here today with James Stevens and Jonathan Hello. Charney. This is our Friday wrap up, and uh, this is also the last show for this year. This will be our last uh, 2011 roundtable show, and probably any show that we're going to do this year. So, yeah. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna try to wrap it up with a with a bang. Yeah. Well. I don't know about the bangs. Small whimper. We can make the bangs, but we're not no going to do that today. No cannons this year. Well, you never know. Okay. You never know. All right. But, uh, hey, don't hit the table. We're real live today, so hey, uh, Jonathan, do you have a story you want to present to us today? Yes. Here's the headline: Ninety-nine-year-old divorces wife after he discovers an affair from the forties. Well, that's holding a grudge. <laughs> it's like seventy years of marriage or something, right? Yes, yeah, is an Italian couple are to become the world's oldest divorcees after the 99-year-old husband found that his 96-year-old wife had an affair <laughs> in the 1940s. The Italian man, identified by the lawyer in the case only as Anthony C., was rifling through an old chest of drawers when he made the discovery a few days before Christmas. Discovery of what? Letters. Letters. Oh, so so, so she with, held on to love letters from the 1940s. It was a skin condom from way back then. Whoa. <laughs> uh, so she wrote the letters to her love lover during a secret affair in the 40s, according to the court papers released in Rome this week. <laughs> you know, the Catholic Church might actually absolve that marriage. <laughs> After 80 years? I... Well, actually, I think it was like 76 years or something. Yeah, see, like, he was so upset that he immediately confronted his wife of 77 years. 77, that's right. As Rosa C. and demanded a divorce. At 99 years old? You know, they always say Italians are hot-blooded, but that's <laughs> a little excessive. That's way excessive. I mean, how do you just throw that whole marriage away? I mean, you got to have grandkids. you got to uh, have kids. Oh, oh yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's... Oh, hold on. You got more? You got that's more? the okay, best we'll part. Back to John. Yeah. Oh, that was the best part. Oh, the best part. No, we almost almost it's, it's, missed the best part. I know. Okay. Well, hold on. Um, <laughs> musical interlude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, here we go. The couple are now preparing to split, despite the time ties they have forged over nearly 80, 80 de eight decades 80 decades wow they're old they have <laughs> they have five children a dozen grandchildren and one great grandchild yeah so uh, it means nothing well I, you know. I mean okay now my question is are they divorced or have they just filed it they're getting it ready to, i think they said they're getting ready to split so I'm, they uh, said they're, they're in court. Ready, they're getting ready to split. Okay. So I'm assuming because it says they're in court. So I'm assuming that's uh, you know they're sort of they're in the process. The couple wow. met in the 1930s. <laughs> wow. So uh, that's not. You know, He's, I understand being a little upset, and I think there is a quote because I I had heard this story before that she said that she was faithful. The rest of the time. Just yeah. that one affair. And she was guilt stricken over it. Yeah. I mean, well, obviously not enough to tell him. <laughs> but no, I mean, I mean no, a whole no, lie to yourself that long. Maybe I could understand after like 60 years being like, sorry, I forgot. You know? <laughs> when Alzheimer's kicks in, that's okay not to tell because you probably have forgotten. But to keep the letters in the chest, you know. Oh, and, <laughs> oh more. Here We've you got go. more. James is Fine. right about the blood. It says the Italian press attributed the acrimonious split to the couple's southern blood. <laughs> he was originally from Alabia in Sardinia, and his wife was born in Naples. They're saying it's because they're southern blooded Italians. <laughs> but but here's my Fashion. thing. Here's my thing. You know, he's ninety nine. She's ninety six. Wait a day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at some point, one of them's just going to drop dead. Yeah, it does seem kind of... 90, I mean, not, 99. Well, I mean, you know, a couple hey, of years. I mean, what does he think? Maybe she snores, well, and he just wants to... Yeah, know. but what does he think? He can do better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to go rob the cradle. I'm going to get a 78-year-old. Yeah, I'm going to find his dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think about that time, you know, he's just going, I just want to be alone, you know. Yeah, maybe. I love but, that. But I'm going to find my own after almost 80 years of marriage. 
I'm going to find myself the sexiest. Sad. No, it is sad. No, it, you know, if we were to take it seriously, as funny as it is, it is pretty sad. You figure at 99, you've been with this woman for basically your whole life. And well, not just your whole life. I mean, there's lifetimes in there. Well, yeah, absolutely. But still, it's kind of sad. Yeah, they, they did. The story did say they had some issues, you know, <laughs> earlier in their, their like, no, what is it? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? You know what it is? Is they probably wanted to get into Guinness. They're the oldest divorced couple. I never even gave that a thought. What a thought. I wonder if... I wonder, I wonder, I wonder that, if, that would be the only thing that I can think of to, <laughs> to justify wow. a divorce at that age is, you know, we're going to die. Let's get something. Let's get in the Guinness <laughs> World. Besides, their, do, besides well, their five kids, a dozen grandchildren, and one great-grandchild? I don't know. Well, Good thought. I mean, you know, you can always ask them. You can, I just... You better hurry have, up. Do they have an email address? <laughs> <laughs> Snail mail may not get there in time. Yeah. <laughs> Carrier pigeon. Yeah. I mean, when they get the bill for the lawyers, yeah, they're going to keel over. <laughs> <laughs> it's a t- it's Italian, so isn't they already paid for? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Know, probably. Okay, James, your turn. You're on. All right. Are you guys ready? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're not ready. Not really. All right. <laughs> this is the headline. Man dies after ingesting cocaine... From brother's butt. <laughs> what? <laughs> you heard that right. You, you. I am not misreading this headline. This man died after eating cocaine from his brother's rear end. <clears throat> That's a sad. No, I have should, to read this. Story. No, you got to read that story. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sad. That should never be talked. North, yeah. Sorry. North. Charleston police are charging a man with involuntary manslaughter after they say he told his brother to eat cocaine to destroy evidence. Police say 20-year-old Wayne Joshua Mitchell died about an hour after he ate a large amount of cocaine in the backseat of a North Charleston police cruiser and was taken to a hospital last month. Police on Monday issued a warrant for his brother's arrest, blah, 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 blah. Now, the... Police say the man had been arrested November 30th on cocaine trafficking charges. Officers say the brothers were in the back of the patrol car. They discuss discussing eating cocaine. Video from inside the police car <laughs> captured a conversation between the brothers where D'Angelo De- De- pleaded with his younger brother to take the cocaine in his bottom and eat it to get rid of it. Wait, wait, so, so is the, is the, 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 hold on, hold on, this is a quote from the video. You have to listen to the quote. Oh, dear God. One of us gotta do it. You, the only one that don't have any strikes. You, my little brother, I'm quoting this. You, my little brother, I'm gonna get life. D'Angelo said to Wayne. His brother complied and ate the drugs. <laughs> when officers saw the cocaine residue on the seat where Wayne sat, D'Angelo told officers that his brother swallowed cocaine. Within the hour, Wayne struggled to breathe and bled from his mouth and died. Oh. Oh. So did they record the act in action? Well, police say Mitchell... Hold on. Police say Mitchell had been released on bail before they discovered he had a role in his brother's death. So they hadn't watched the video when they released him on bail. They went back because they found the cocaine residue on the seat (laughs) where he was sitting. Right. Decided they'd watch the video, Video. watch the video, saw what happened, went back and arrested him for involuntary manslaughter. Now, I don't care. I got two brothers. If I'm arrested in the car with them and one of them says, hey, will you pick my butt? And eat cocaine. I love my brothers. There ain't no love that goes that far <laughs> to eat anything out of my brother's ass. <laughs> so was 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 what, did they were they did he guy pick it out and then eat it or was it to mouth the anus action? I believe well, he picked it out. Well, let's see. They're both handcuffed, probably with their hands behind their back. So he probably just put took his hands and stuck it into his brother's pants, I would assume. I don't think yeah, he could get his face I mean, down there. No, oh, you can do the God. face thing, but you gotta pull the pants uh, down. I and you ain't, I mean, you, you know what? Get... I don't even want this visual anymore. <laughs> I've had enough. Some things uh, cannot be unseen. Uh, I, I, it, but, I mean, just, I thought people were stupid. Thought? 
You know. But that goes to a whole new level of stupidity. Yeah. It's... Th- that's like something I never thought I would ever hear about happening. I mean, <laughs> oh, I understand being like, dude, I'm going to get life. Dude, I'm going to get life. Well, I'm sorry. You're a dumbass. Oh, come on. After the meth and Walmart story, this was just the next step. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Where am I going to go next? It's like South Park. I'm taking it to so many extremes. Exactly. I don't know where else like, to go. I wonder if they're related. <laughs> well, one's black and the other one was white. Oh, well, hey, that doesn't mean Distant anything. Distant cousin. Day. Distant cousin. Distant. Distant. Very distant. Yeah. <laughs> but, wow. I mean, I came across that story and I was just in shock. You just had to share it with us, right? I had to share it with the world. I yeah. Mean, there's yeah, a whole new level of stupidity out there that you never <laughs> thought you'd come across. Okay, so how what a way to wrap video up. video ends up on Smoking yeah, Gun. Maybe that. Huh? Oh, yeah, maybe. How nasty was the flavor, though? I mean, it's oh. bad to begin with. I don't know. I don't Your dad know. wants to move on now. Right, it's it's going to be tough, but I'm actually I'm actually <laughs> going to do real tech stuff now. Okay, you so You guys did the, did the light stuff. I'll get into the heavy moving stuff right now, so... <laughs> but, if we let you. If we let you, yeah, okay. See, I don't get a as tight as it shot. Doesn't involve a I, don't, I don't get a tight shot like you guys do, though. So, so that's kind of... I think we're going to have to work on that. We need another camera. <laughs> so, I have spent the time to do the research, and I have a PowerPoint. Everybody what? has to have a PowerPoint. You actually made a PowerPoint? I have a PowerPoint. Not that they're going to be able to see it, because we'll get to my first slide. And... Or, or not. <laughs> Technical difficulties, Hello? ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Okay, we'll do it this way. You know, I had this all planned out. Ta da! Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got it right, too. Uh. You guys probably can't see it, but behind me is a photo of an email message that I received. And I have a little pet peeve. And I also am somewhat security conscious about what happens with email that comes to you. So, I want you, you probably can't see it, but what has being represented here is that on the address line they definitely can't see it. to all the people uh, that this person wanted to send this email to is all visible to all of us. Uh, yes. So what you have when you send an e- email out is you've got the regular two, you have the CC, which stands for carbon copy, and then you have the BCC, <laughs> which stands for blind carbon copy. So what's happened is I don't mind getting your email, but I do mind having my email address show up on every one of those emails that you sent out so that everybody else can know my email address, including spam bots that are able to see on some computers that aren't secured, are able to see the fact that, they, oh, look at all these wonderful uh, email addresses. And uh, uh, it's just not the way to do it. So I'm trying to encourage everybody that just feels like they have to send out the latest joke or the funniest picture or whatever it may be to all their friends, which you're you're welcome to do. It's going to hit my spam box and get deleted anyway. (laughs) Uh, But Your poor dad. But please, please learn to use BCC. Put all those addresses in in it. And then that way, security-wise... Uh, you're protecting all your friends, but yet the email is getting to everybody just as it's supposed to. So, so you don't like Hawaiian te- sushi? I... Spam. Spam. <laughs> gotcha. No, I don't like spam. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized something that spam would be as far as tech-wise. Something posing as mail. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, we'll move along. Anyway, <laughs> this is this is on this one. Learn to use your email properly. Don't put it on the CC for everybody, okay? So, one of the bigger questions that have happened all year. I, I have to look to see if you guys can see it or not. I don't know. Th- don't think you can. Uh, no. I think next time I'll reverse the colors. But anyway, one of the big wars this year, of course, has been the browser wars, and it uh, it tends to be go Google Chrome. <laughs> so yeah. So the idea here is go go gadget. What <laughs> what makes faster web browsing? Because there's some things that you can do to to make your web browsing experience better and faster. And the first one for me is the actual browser. Uh, you have a number of choices out there. Um, the majority still use IE, which is Internet Explorer. 
Uh, and then there's Firefox, which is a good choice. Uh, there's Opera that's out there as well. Ooh. I mean, there's a number of them. No Opera. And, uh, but my Ooh, favorite, I... my favorite, and the lab tested uh, browser that's the winner for 2011 is Google Chrome. Woo-hoo. Yeah, and Google it's Chrome. government approved for all their spying needs. That's right. So. Uh, believe it or not, for me, it's made a big difference. Uh, I, I I like Google Chrome. I think it's a faster experience. Uh, I like the way their tabs work. There's a whole bunch of things within it that, yeah, the others do. Firefox does it, too. I understand. And for all those who, app lovers who haven't ever seen an app that they didn't like, Firefox is for you because you can throw a gazillion on them <laughs> and slow down your experience to almost nothing. You know, the, the one thing I dislike about Chrome, um, IE and Firefox haven't, I haven't gotten it to work in Chrome as sufficiently, is when you close the browser, have it delete your history you know, all, all that, I have, I have all there, the settings right on Chrome. Yeah. It does not do that. Well, it does not erase everything for me. Well, I was going to get there, but I was going to let I was going to talk about deleting cookies and things like that when you finish that thing too. But, okay, well, we're, we're there. We're, I mean, there are a number uh, of things that you can do. But as far as that, you actually do need to go into the um, manage settings. Yeah, no, I've done that. And and it then, still doesn't you know, work. No, what you need to do is you need to ma- you don't have to go through and manually do it. All you do is you just uh, go to edit items and then click on delete from history from the beginning of time is what they call it in, in their managed settings. And it right. takes about 30 seconds, and that'll clean everything well, out. I want it, I, browser but browser. you want it automatically on every Firefox, time it closes. You want it automatic on close. Yeah. Yeah. Which well, it doesn't do. You know what? I, can't it, get it. I can say that it's native within Chrome, but you probably can go in and get an app that makes it work yeah. that way. I mean, then, you know, so... That's just one, that's just one of my my pet peeves. But You just like you know, Firefox, honestly, Firefox, and that's I, fine. I like that Firefox does that. But I don't like that there's no way to really tell it what to get rid of and what not to get rid of. Because if you just close Firefox, it wipes everything clean. And there's some things that I wanted to keep track of. That's why I like the actual edit feature in in Google Chrome. And I still do it from the beginning of time every now and then when I go in there because... But see what what I did because I've been using Gro- Google Chrome exclusively for the last couple of months. Um, there's a button that basically I hit, and then if it basically you click it, comes up with a delete tab, and then you just you know clear it clears everything. Yeah. So I just do that every time I'm browsing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a workaround for it. Yeah. Anyway. Probably the second item uh, that slows down your uh, your browsing experience is Flash. Now I'm a fan of fra- Flash. I do a lot of programming with Flash. But uh, some people get carried away. They will make their whole page flash and and they'll have a splash screen, which takes you know thirty seconds before you get to where you want to go, and that annoys the hell out of me. <laughs> so uh, there are settings on all the browsers actually that you can turn off flash. Now, with that said, should you do that and you get to a part of a page where the flash is actually important and part of what you want to know, you got to turn it back on. So um, how much does it save? It only really saves you some speed time if you're uh, going to a web page that has like a splash screen, which I really don't like the idea of doing that. Um, there's a lot of forms and other things out there that are done in Flash that work perfectly well and load very fast. So just be aware of that. And, you know, that, that was the complaint that Apple, of course, has with, their, uh, with Flash is that they don't put it on their uh, on their products. They feel Flash is a... Uh, CPU hog, and uh, yeah, it could, they could be right, but uh, it's still an awful lot of things out there that use Flash. From my experience, it's more ads that slow it down, because it's having to go mm-hmm. to another server sure. to retrieve information. Sure. That's why I like to know script for Firefox, and there's similar stuff, but nothing that works as elegantly as it that stops all the Flash, and then if you want it, you know, you hit a button, or you can just select an item within that, like if you're watching a movie, you know, you, you see the, the outline of the movie box, and you just click it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, but generally, yeah. the ads, in, in my experience, are the slowest. Yeah, and, and I, I think you're probably right in that. Um, but anything in Flash, as far as I'm concerned right now, is it could be part of the browsing experience that makes you unhappy. If your broadband is slow, think about turning it off. But remember, you can miss some con- content. Uh, the other problem is too many tabs. Um, you know, uh, Firefox and, and Chrome work really well. They have nice separate tabs. And what I really like about them is that, uh, versus IE, is that 
you can actually have multiple pages open in a full tab instead of having to take the page you're at and readdress it to another you know another URL and take it within that same page you have multiple tabs and actually makes your browsing experience better so I think learn to use tabs they have, they have tab browsing in IE yeah I don't <laughs> unless you're talking force new window to tab which is something I which like. is a yeah, yeah. And, and that's I a like good that one too. that's a good setting and and I think that's if you're going to do um, some research or some studying or whatever you might do where you're going from page to page page tabs tabs work great and they, it's the fastest way of doing it as well so I think that's that's probably the best thing on there so there's my suggestions for 2011 on faster browsing um, you know, always, uh, you know, clean your cookies out. There's a number of other things you can do, too, but those happen to be my three pet peeves, and thought I'd share those <laughs> with you. So there goes that. Um, for you, John likes to throw my papers away here. Uh, for those of you that have your wonderful iPads, like I do, one of the, one of the great things about, uh, let me see how many I've got on here. Hold on. Uh, of the iPad is the fact that you can there again like like the iPhone like everything else there's there's tons and tons of apps and um, I decided to put together a few that I really like the best this is kind of my selection of the best iPad apps for 2011 so how many did you was there well I only did five but but, but the, in all my honesty I probably have 60 I'd like to add one but, my because my, it's for the iPhone and iPad is the yeah. iNet Okay. Well, we'll add that to the list. Let me get through mine, and then you guys, if you guys have, um, you know, some things. W one of them that I really like is a news aggregator, which is called Flip, uh, Flipboard. And Flipboard works uh, really well. It's got a nice interface. It interfaces with a number of different... Kind of Here, I can hold it for you. No, please. that's all right. It, it, and it, what it does is it, and in my case, I have it going to Facebook, Twitter, FlipTech, Flip Photos. I mean, there's a number of aggregated sites that you can go to. And what's really nice about them is it, it handles the view of the information that you need really, really well. Pictures are outstanding. Yeah. The content so is. So excited for Justified. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, um, I, I think it's great. It's my favorite app on the iPad, is Flip. Um, Flipboard. So give it a try. I think you'll like it. It works really well. Uh, the other thing is when you're reading a lot of books, uh, in all honesty, there's nothing better than Kindle, um, Amazon with their collection of books and everything. The Kindle app on the iPad is wonderful. Uh, the I read all my books uh, strictly online now, and um, Kindle d d handles it really, really well. The Apple app is very nice. It works as well, too, uh, but uh, it doesn't have the library that Kindle has. I mean, it's really, really much yeah. better. So that's my second most favorite app. Um, uh, in news aggregators, I read a ton of news, and just another one that's out there too is called Pulse. Uh, it's another uh, aggregator that you might like to try. Again, it puts uh, puts all the news in in an easy to read format, uh, and it's it's a great app. Uh, and the other wonderful thing about the apps on iPhone and iPad, of course, is weather. Uh, there's some great weather apps out there. And I think all of us are always interested in what the heck's going on in the weather. Yeah. Uh, there's the the uh, the gold standard, of course, is the Weather Channel. But I actually like there's two of them that I really like. One's called Weather Bug, and it's it's a a, a really nice location based weather program hmm. uh, that works really well. And then there's IntelliCast as well. I have three of them that I really like. But uh, WeatherBug probably is the fastest loading. It gives you the quickest oh, wow. uh, weather. I mean, it works works real well. It gives you lifetime radar Does, images. So, so you have the iOS 5 on there, right? Yes. Does that have the, the, the scroll down? Uh, yes. It? Yes, you can. And you can well, I meant the, on from the top. Oh, I yeah. was wondering, does it do that? Does, does any of your weather apps actually able to put it on on there? I uh, believe so. Because I know, like the, the the iPhone has one for the Yahoo. I mean, it would be cool if you get one that was a uh, you know had a little bit more better information. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know yeah. if that one works specifically. With I don't know. I one. haven't played around with it much, but I like it because I like the real time radar. I like the, you know the location setting. I'm, I don't know. To me, it's it's. It's a little cleaner than the weather, the weather Channel, but the Weather Channel is still the main main app. I mean, so. I don't know. If, at least from looking at it, it's cool because it gives you a lot of information, but it's clean. Right. I mean, it's it's not it's not a scramble for having to look through things, pushing buttons. I mean, there's just if you're just looking at it, there's you know I don't know if you know you guys can see it, but I mean there's like there's the the weather. That's a camera. That's the the, the right. And the what's nice forecast. is like if you want to do the five day forecast, it pops out larger. 
Uh, I, I mean, it's what, what's what I really like about it too is it isn't super loaded with ads. They put the ads down on the bottom, and you, basically you don't see them. It's a free app, yeah. so of course there's going to be advertising. But uh, I, mean, it's, I, uh, I, you know. I really like the way this looks, just because the fact that it gives you a lot of information without it being too much, right. which is right. which is definitely something a lot of apps can do, especially on the iPhone. They'll throw so much information on you on a small screen. Oh, that yeah. it's just it's just it's cluttered. It's not clean, and sometimes it's just down, downright hard to to tell the information. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So, a couple of great weather apps always use that. Uh, the other uh, the other one that uh, those of us that are on Facebook, um, there's a number of really good Facebook apps uh, for the iPad. Um, I like the one that's uh, Facebook HD, uh, but there are uh, there are really a number of them. There's Friendly. And this is just straight the actual and Facebook. Facely, actually, this is it's called Facely HD, which I like a lot. And then, and then Facebook, of course, has their their version that they put out. But so. there's a, a number of good ones out there. So have if you you're tried? I'm sorry. Have you tried the new one? The newest, newest, the, the latest and greatest oh, Facebook. Yeah, the new up, updated. Yeah. version of the Facebook app. Yeah, I'm not a f- fan of it. Yeah, because for the iPhone, I like it specifically. One thing, um, they made searching for people easier. The one thing I like about it is on the the iPhone app, you know, to tell you what's happening. You know, say it'll say like you know, insert person here likes your liked your status or comment on your page. Right. Before you hit a button, it'd be your entire page. It always took forever to load. For me, it never works. It never worked right. Instead, they, they you know now you push the button on the on the top bar. It's a, you know the screen within the browser doesn't take open doesn't take over the whole thing, and it works. Because for me the the iPhone the I like Facebook the app just never worked. It's still a little clunky. It's it's their actual version. Yeah, their actual version. Okay. Um, I just the, the thing I like about it the most just happens to be the, you know the the people who coming you know the the people who comment because that is cleaner. I think the Facebook app is is much cleaner than it's it was. Cleaner than it was, but it's still not that great. So. Is yeah. that one of your picks? Well, yeah, that so would be one of mine. Good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, because that, I mean, the the difference is you're you're taking something from either, you know, it, that's a web experience to an app experience, which I think is always going to be an yeah. issue. That okay, is. so it's the one that actually says Facebook Inc. Yeah, it's the one from Facebook. Have you tried yeah. that one? I'm gonna load it. Um, uh, well, so my, load my it. biggest pick would be the IMDb app. Uh, I'll second that, that, yeah. That's because it saves you so much headache when you're trying to figure out a celebrity or movie or or producer or who did what in a movie. I don't throw in the Fandango one along with that, too. I was going to toss in the Fandango one, but on top of that, I also am a big fan for Android users. I don't know if they have it for Apple. I know they have it for Android. Is Zedge. Z-E-D-G-E. Great for ringtones, wallpapers. No, they don't have. Like they've, that. they've similar stuff. I didn't know they had it that. for that, but that that's really awesome. It's a user based. Yeah, it's free. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, you do have ads. They're at the bottom. They're not really that big of a deal. But that one's great for. I mean, just any type of TV show that you could think of, they pretty much have it. Right. TV yeah. show, movie. They have similar one, but from I know playing with it on your phone, it's not as good. No, it, this one's great, and they have <laughs> HD wallpapers. My, I was going to say, my number one all-time choice is iNet for the iPhone and iPad. <coughs> yeah. What I, the thing I like about this is what you do is basically it's a network, uh, network tools. It allows you to scan a network that you access Wi-Fi. It'll give you all the IP addresses of it. I've been able to access, you know, when I had my up at my old at my old place, I was able to actually log on to my my router via the phone. Um, it, it does a lot of information. It gives you MAC addresses. Allows you to ping. There's just just from the stuff I've used it for, it's just very handy. Yeah. I mean, it's probably one of the apps I use all the time. I know when I was setting up the app for the Direct TV. Right. It was one of the things that allowed me to see a few things, and I just that's Help, helped prob- you with setting that up. That's good. We we could we'll do a whole show on apps because there's some great ones. If you're a, a real news junkie, kind of like I am, the uh, I, I really like it. And you have to kind of watch where the bent goes a little bit. That means politically, uh, yep, <laughs> for you guys, is uh, called the daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, the daily is and probably that's paid, right. It's is that a, a paid? It, you got to pay for it. But it is the sweetest looking news aggregator out there. I mean, it is really, really. Well, nice. If I remember correctly, isn't the daily one that's specifically designed? I mean, they have people working specifically for this. It's not correct. I didn't think it was other content. I thought they made content specifically for that yeah. once a day. And I, it's I, I, it's I heard, part of Murdoch's. Yeah, I heard it's more of a newspaper. It's updated once a day. I've heard. Right. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it it's it's really nice. I mean, the I mean Here, the picture let me hold quality. It and then you can go from right there. The picture, the you know the 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 picture quality is just the other camera is just outstanding. There we go. Um, yeah, it's too hard to see, but anyway, no, it's, it's, no, it's you can kind of see it. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Actually, I mean, no, switch cameras. I'm sorry. The uh, <laughs> the the um, yeah, there yeah, you can go. kind of see it a little bit better there. But um, anyway, if you like news. And I'm telling you, the the photographs, the photographers they have in this uh, using this app, and the news you get is just outstanding. So it's very good. I think some people have said, "Ah, oh, it's a lot, a lot like a, a daily People magazine." How much? Well, you know, how much is it? Yeah. A, a year, month, you know, episode? Or? I'm going to plead ignorance. I think it's twenty bucks a year. I could twenty be bucks a year. That's, that's yeah, not bad. Good, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm, uh, have you tried the News 360? Yeah, and I, it's okay. Well, the thing I like about that, I mean, I'll be honest, it's not the greatest, but at least for the iPhone, it gives you access to a ton of stories. Yeah. That's yeah. the one thing I like about it. It's one of these things that they just, you know, if you like tech, you like this. It's a lot out there. Right. It's not the greatest as far as looking functionality-wise, but if you want just to access to quickly glance through stories, you know, it's good for that. It, I don't think it's as good as Flipboard. Right. It definitely doesn't have the quality well, of some of the, the, the that, daily stuff. That's a lot like the Pulse that I was talking about. It's an mm -hmm. aggregator as well, and it works pretty well. It has multiple layers, and you, you flip through whatever layers you Is see. You can, set, you can set, like, I want to read technology. I want to read, you know, whatever. And it lets you set a bar... To whatever news you're looking for and you can scroll through it Do you know is that ipad or iphone only or uh as far as i know i don't know if it's available for android uh but it's so i think it's an iproduct right now only uh, but okay. it, it, i'm sure if if it isn't uh an android app it, it will be shortly so yeah because uh, okay. so much to cover it so i'm gonna say that's it on rob's picks for the best apps for 2011. um so there's a, there's something that uh, then even I was a little late to the show for, and uh, and that means that it wasn't quite certain what the heck it is. And I think most of us in my age bracket and older, there's this little square box thing that shows up. And again, you probably can kind of see it right there. If if Jonathan would just hold this up to the screen real quick, up to uh, there, you see that little box? A wonderful little box that is called the QR. And uh, what that does is if you have a phone that's got a scanner in it, and about just every phone nowadays has a scanner, and I'm going to show you, James is going to scan in this code. And Yep, that's in there. Okay, so that code goes in, and what happens, John, you can do it too if you want, but uh, if you, almost every phone now has a... Um, a way to scan in these codes. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, just they give some names. There's one like the red scanner. Sometimes yeah. it says right. QR code scanner, scanner. Right. My t mine, since I'm part of the AT&T, uh, for the Android, is the AT&T code scanner. Right. That, is that one is slow? Because I had to switch to another one because the AT&T scanner for the iPhone was slow. No, this one's actually pretty quick. For, okay. But it might just be my phone since yeah. mine's a... The, you, know, I, you have the iPhone 4. Did you change it from your old iPhone or well part of the problem is I actually noticed that what the one for the iPhone does it actually goes to the AT&T servers so part of the slowness oh, no, was yeah, it was actually it was actually going to it was going right. through there so that end was no, slow see I can get away from that okay yeah. did this work for you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, okay. perfect right to the OGT site oh, okay so. good so um, you know f it stands for quick response code just in case you want to know what I QR stands for I didn't know that yeah um, and it, what's interesting you know about that? it, we all we've all know what bo uh, uh, <laughs> bar what barcodes are, and you've seen everything in a grocery store has a, a barcode, but uh, it's got a limitation, and I, I didn't realize the uh, the limitations um, that uh, barcodes have. Um, uh, since uh, barcodes are linear or one dimensional codes and can only hold up to twenty numbers. Uh, there is a limitation, yeah. so eventually they could, they're, they're going to run out of numbers. Uh, where the um, QR codes are considered 2D, uh, and it's almost um, infinite, and it and, and you can put all kinds of information within it. You can put URLs, you can put product information, but advertising it's in it. Scary if you think about I, it. I know it's what? pretty amazing. See, it's kind of scary if you think about it. Uh, how what information they can stick in those things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But anyway, my, it's, my a, it's a ton of information. Yeah. Interesting enough, it was invented 
by a man in Japan who was working for Toyota. So Toyota actually is the owner of the QR codes. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Go Toyota. Yeah. That so that was be a Japanese and working for any type of company. Yeah. But anyway, so that was pretty interesting. Bye. So what's going to happen with these Bye. is you're going to see more and more of these uh, QR codes coming out. And you're going to even find one on our site. We're, we are trying to figure out. We've got two of these little Android tablets uh, that we want to give away. And we were going to do it for Christmas, and that didn't really work out. Now I'm thinking we're going to make it an Easter egg hunt. And so I think what we're going to do is go to our site, uh, the OGT.TV site, and somewhere in there will be a QR code that's going to give you some clues. You're going to hunt down something, and we're going to end this by Easter. So this will be an Easter thing. And so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to let people, we're going to put together a, an <laughs> Easter egg hunt on our site, and you'll be able to play around with it and go to it and try to find out what we're looking for. And the first two people to find out where it's at and what we're looking for will win an Android tablet. So what's so. the what's the, the the URL for that set address, that <laughs> website? I mean, you've got it, you know. Well, you know, it's the, the OGT.TV website. What was that again? You're going to have to repeat that. The, T-H-E, O-G-T dot TV. I think I got okay, it. Okay, I think John's got it. Thank you, John. That's good for the good good plug there. It's, there's that one. Anyway, uh, okay. so you, again, you're going to see a lot, a lot of uh, QR Q codes out there. We're even going to start using them, too. And a lot of people are starting to throw them on their, their business cards. And, uh, yeah, and you'll find them in, like, fast food Oh yeah, or, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Everywhere. Well, even uh, we don't have one here, but I one of the places we go that when we get a soda from the fountain drink, there the the Pepsi cups cups have QR codes on them, and uh, they're good for um, sometimes discounts. Sometimes it takes you to different places. I mean, I think it's kind of clever. Uh, Pepsi was offering like a quarter off any drink or something. I know if you look at uh, like Subway's done it before, and there's a couple other places that they'll have it. You know, on their big promotion, they had it for. Uh, oh. Green Lantern. Green, uh, one of the green. That's the Green Hornet. One. Oh, the one green I remember Hornet. was the Green Hornet. They had like their, their they had one for the Lantern too. Yeah, they had yeah. you know they had this thing that says you know you'll win something here you know and so here was like the, the website and the rules. So you right. scan it with your phone and it would give you more information. Right. And yeah. the place to enter. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So pretty neat. Pretty neat thing. That's kind of a neat technology thing. Um, so it's going to make you get a either go out and buy a smartphone or borrow somebody's <laughs> who has one because we're going to we're going to stick to that QR code for you to hunt and find what Legally we're going to do. Borrow. So yeah. <laughs> so my suggestion an iPhone. Uh, yeah, my my suggestion is not. <laughs> but, <laughs> my suggestion is not too. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, you know that's okay. John's a fanboy and that, that's fine. <laughs> so. All right. So what what's coming up? We know what's coming up. New Year's. New Year's Eve, right? So, uh, well, what is one of the biggest things you hear on the news all the time? <laughs> is is what you shouldn't be doing New Year's Eve at midnight is shooting up in the air. You like you like the group of people I got. These are a bunch of very enthusiastic celebrating people from Syria, I believe. So, when, <laughs> but, where, where does the the the, the shock that well, what comes up must come down? That's right. What what goes up must come down. So. One of the things that we need to talk about is the fact that um, <laughs> some, of, some of the stuff you hear uh, on the television news is not 100% accurate, but it is dangerous. Now, there have been some deaths, but most of the time it's injury situations because you got to think the bullet does go up, but it's got to come down. But it only has about 260 foot-pounds of energy, so that that's not enough to penetrate your skin a whole lot, but if you get hit right in the middle of the head, it's gonna it could do some damage. So you're it saying kill one, you. it can't go beyond terminal velocity? No, no, it's, it's no, not. Nothing no. can go beyond no. terminal velocity. Not using not using the energy coming down of yeah, itself. Not, it has nothing, no other energy behind it. So if, if you're falling, you can't go past terminal velocity. That's right. Not without that? an assist. And that's you know, and that's the From same thing that's going to happen with. Um, uh, you know, with their bullets. So that there's a firearms instructor. I've been an instructor for almost 30 years. He is the old guy. Uh, I am the old guy, and oh. I have firearms tech that we're going to be doing too. <laughs> so it is important that please don't go out and shoot your firearms and by pointing the gun up in the air. If you are in an area where there's not any homes and there's a bank that you can shoot in, and you just want to go out and make some noise, not a that's money bank. Fine. Yeah, not a money bank. Can we not a money bank. Because <laughs> if you shoot, you don't want to hold a, a money bank. I'm talking about dirt. 
bank, of course. But the other problem is, is if you've been in, you've been drinking a little bit that evening, do me a favor, put your guns away, lock them up, and don't go anywhere yes. near them, okay? Because and the, the, the do sec- not be intoxicated. And don't forget the part, don't point your guns at people either. <laughs> I mean, that's... We hope we hope that doesn't happen, but... Well, you know, if, you, if um, you're going to do not point up, you got to do it not point at people, Yeah, don't, people too. don't, you know, make it totally safe. Or probably yes. the best thing to do is if you, you've been inviting in any way, uh, don't take your guns out. Put it away. Yeah. You don't need to make the noise. You don't need to go out there and injure yourself or your friends or something. To Get make a pot it, uh, in a pan if you really need there to. There you go. And a big spoon, in a pan. Whatever. And, yeah. and also, if, if, you know, if you all decide to drink, make sure you call a cab. You know, no DUIs. Yes, it's please. not worth it. Yeah. Actually, AAA does do their services. Time but you, yeah, it's free, to- uh, free, free towing yeah. for anybody, no matter what the situation. They yeah. will come and tow. They will tow you and get you home safe. So yeah, no drinking and driving. We'd like to keep you guys around for we, a while. We want you to, to uh, pass the word around about all guy tech. And, you know, we this is a new venture for us. We're still looking for those of you out there uh, to come on into the studio and give us the uh, an interview, talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. We're not charging. It's totally free. I You know, I can't believe you. I'm not going to take up an opportunity. If you have a new business in particular, come on in and, and we'll uh, we'll talk about what you've got going. And, maybe they just have something about in, so. against old guys. Yeah, maybe. I don't think it's... I think it's the young guys they're worried about. It's got to be the guy in the wheelchair. (laughs) So, but anyway, it's been fun. This has been a great time for all of us. 2011 has been a a learning learning experience for us here at Old Guy Tech. One of the things you get to look forward to in January is Jonathan and I are going to be attending the Shooting, Hunting, and Outdoor Trade Show, Mm -hmm. and we're hoping to do a number (laughs) of uh, interviews with different manufacturers, gun manufacturers, whatever. We're really looking forward to doing that. We're not 100% yet. Uh, certain if we're going to uh, try to do an upload every night of the show or not. We'll see. We might. That might be a fun thing to do. But come and visit it because it will give you an opportunity to see <laughs> everything that's out there uh, and any kind of the, the hunting industry, shooting industry, sports industry. They're going to be there. Law enforcement. Uh, there's all kinds of things. And we will be reporting from Las Vegas uh, at the SHOT Show for that. And, and Dustin Ellerman. Yeah. And and so on the January 15th is our first day there. Uh no, January 16th is the first day there, and we're going to get an opportunity to go out to the shooting range and uh, try out a number of these firearms Jeez. and things. So that's going to be fun. Uh, and then uh, the rest of the week is actually at the convention, and it's it's huge. Um, John and I are going to wear our feet out, but that'll be the fun part. And uh, if you're any man, if you are a manufacturer or somebody else watching the show, uh, are you interested in us coming by and saying hi? Uh, give us a call. Uh, we'll we'll be glad to come by and interview you. And other than that, thank you very much. Oh, wait, wait, before and there's also yep. there's what? another thing is uh, we recently did an interview with the El Dorado County Sheriff John Diagostini. If you're interested in just hearing from you know our particular local sheriff or just a sheriff in general, check that out. And uh, we also have an interview. Our one of our interviews lately is with uh, Thomas Fritchie. Fritchie. Yes. Uh-huh. He's a uh, film school teacher. Or, if it's Institute, Institute of the Arts. Yeah. So if, yes, you, uh-huh. if you're interested in uh, listening, uh, listening to a teacher there, just you know his love for film. Check that out. It's in the interview section on the OGT website. So we do have some good stuff out there. We're just hoping you take advantage of it. Um, I know that the uh, the sheriff's interview is getting a lot of looks, and that's great. We're seeing the hit numbers going. But, you know, it's something that we're bringing to you uh, as just a community-based thing. And we're hoping to continue that and uh, maybe even do other things like maybe Amber Alerts and whatever else might happen. So please stop by every day at our website. Take a look. See if there's anything new there. We're going to try to get, uh, you know, keep the contact down to 30 minutes. We went way over today. So hopefully you're seeing it. Uh, you know, we're hoping you're entertained enough Definitely. to stay through the whole show. So for John Charney. James Stevens, I'm Rob Charney, the old guy tech for the rest of us. We'll see you next year. Thank you and goodbye. Hi, this is Rob Charney with Old Guy Tech TV, and I want to talk to you today about Windfall. Windfall has two outstanding offers for you to take advantage of. They have their 12 week business only ad for just $60. That's just $5 a week. You're not going to find a better deal anywhere. Windfall has a rewards program like no other. A real windfall. Give us five and your ad is free. So refer five people or businesses and you get your ad for free. Visit Windfall on the web at www.shopthewindfall.com or call 530-621-1698. Everybody needs a windfall. Thank you, Windfall. See you soon.